okay hi um i hope you guys are doing well um i saw the reviews on the previous video a few people did not like the music the noise and all that stuff so i'm taking it out like you know this is just going to be um unedited kind of video format i think i prefer that so okay um what do we have here this is uh, an intro video on digital painting 101 okay so again i want to make a few things clear i'm not doing this for money i'm not um, trying to monetize on this um but just putting stuff out there revolving all these topics that i've known like you know i've been working as a concept artist for quite some time now work done some illustration works design work uh, right now I'm working as um, my own boss I'm directing and producing my own short film um, it's a bit of a risky take but it is what it is you, when you're an artist you just have to push forward right um, okay so anyway um this video is revolving intro to digital art okay so this will be divided into three phases three or four phases mostly um <clears throat> now this is just the intro the second phase would be around line shapes brush efficiency edges light color and so on and so forth third phase will be about observation how to paint details what to paint when and when when and how to use custom paints and all that stuff okay so <clears throat> let's uh, jump into it so this is just an intro okay that's mostly it so let's uh, look at digital painting 101 there are a lot of softwares that you can use to paint like you know for example there is Krita which I love then there is Clip Studio Paint. Uh, then there is uh, Corel Painter. Um, there is Photoshop, like you know that you can see, um, <clears throat> and a bunch more like Procreate on the iPad, Heavy Paint, Baby Paint, etc., etc. The list goes on and on. Uh, but since uh, Photoshop is one of the primary tools that people use as an industry standard for illustration purposes uh, we're gonna look at Photoshop okay so first is first like you know how to hold your Wacom pen okay now I don't see a lot of people make videos on this but um, this is very important like you know for the longevity of your hands and your fingers so let's look at that this is a very crude sketch of how to hold your pen so as you can see this is my hand okay let's just take a different color this is my hand okay my index comes in and my thumb comes in okay and I'm holding it way too close to the tip of the Wacom tablet Okay. and this is one of the most common ways people hold their pens and this causes a lot of issues on your hands and your strengths like you know so the other key thing that people usually do when they hold in pose one like you know, I'm just gonna call this pose one is that they rest your entire side of the palm on the tablet creating a big like you know a surface con like you know surface interaction or a surface contact or you know whatever fancy terms that you want to throw at it. Um, now because of this you're putting a lot more weight on your entire wrist your hand so this paints like you know this starts to hurt this area like you know your wrist starts to hurt um, because you're holding the pen way too close to the like you know the fingers are being held way too close to the pen tip you're putting a lot more pressure on the fingertips so your joints are going to hurt like you know on your index finger um, the ring finger that your pen is resting on kind of takes that 
pressure as well and it hurts a lot too so let's say if you're working professionally and if you're painting for four five six hours okay a day probably eight two uh it's gonna put a lot of strain on your hands your hands are gonna start hurting and it's not ideal okay now why am i bringing up this because i used to do this my fingers used to hurt my hands used to hurt <clears throat> and it wasn't good it was pretty bad okay so this pose one is a no-go now the pose that i would suggest people to use is this holding the fingers like so basically your index comes in a bit further away from the like you know that like probably an inch away from the tip okay and your thumb is holding like so and the only like you know the surface contact that you have with your hands to your tablet is the little finger okay so when you move your hands this way your little finger is just gliding over the tablet that is not a lot of friction Whereas over here, there's a lot of friction. So in this, you're using your biggest muscles, like you know, one of the biggest muscles of your body, which is like you know the shoulders, your biceps, your triceps, um, to keep your hand in check. You know, so there is not much pressure that's coming on your wrist. There is a not a lot of pressure that's coming on your um, joints of your fingers. Okay, so you you can draw for a longer time okay if you guys don't believe me uh, go look up the way Feng Zhu holds his pen go look up look up the way Adam Duff holds his pen go look up how Loish like you know go to her Instagram she uploads a lot of videos where the camera is just hovering over her um, like you know her Cintiq and her hands see the way she holds her pen now this is how i was taught in art school um the reason why i'm saying this here is because i noticed that not a lot of youtubers like you know who make digital art videos talk about this <clears throat> this is pretty important like you know if you, if you want to do this as a profession and make money out of it you need to have a good body otherwise you'll be just using wrong poses wrong hand gestures the way you're holding your fingers wrong and you'll be injuring yourself thus spending that money that you earned to fix those <laughs> body problems okay if that makes sense so try to hold your pen this way okay um, Try to hold your pen this way, even if you're using a Cintiq or if you're using an Intuos, like a screen tablet or even just a regular drawing tablet. Okay, um, you'll probably see your drawings be more looser, um, a lot more fluid. Your lines are more like, you know, it has its energy. There's a lot of differences that you'll probably see just by doing this small change. Um, now, just a story, when I used to paint, I studied at Sheldon College uh, back in Canada and in India, I studied at Manipal University. Um, at Sheridan, I was studying visual arts. It's like a fine arts program. And my teachers used to make me, so let's say if this is my brush. And I used to paint on canvas. My teachers used to tell me to hold my hands right here. So my fingers are just coming down there and my, like, you know, just take a different color. So my, I'm holding it like so. You have more fluidity. You're moving more with your um, shoulders and your elbows. Okay. Uh, this is also taught in animation school. So holding your pen is a very important thing. And this has to be applied to even your drawing tablets regardless of what you use okay so let's move further so i hope this is clear okay uh let me just blur this this is a bit too much no 
Okay, so let's move from this and let's look at how to position your drawing tablet on your desk. Okay, so let's imagine that this is your desk and this is your screen where you're drawing. Okay. Now, there are a few things that I would like to bring up on this as well. Um, firstly is your screen. Uh, you probably spent, let's say, $2,000 or $1,500 or like, you know, whatever your budget is for your computer, like, you know, adding 32 GB RAM, 64 gigs of RAM, like, you know, one terabyte hard drive or an SSD, uh, this graphic card and that graphic card and this processor, all of that stuff does not matter if you do not have a good screen that produces color, like, you know, it produces the accurate colors. So having a good IPS monitor is really important. Okay, so I'm just gonna write down there um, an IPS display. Uh, which is at least 90% um, Adobe RGB. Okay, at the 90% or preferably 100% sRGB okay now I will get into this when we talk about colors and so on and so forth because that's like this is more to deal with technology as such okay but if you guys let's say stumbled upon this video and are wondering what the fuck is this guy talking about um, just know this invest in a good monitor invest in a good screen like you know an IPS display at least 90% Adobe RGB or 100% sRGB. Okay. That's that's mostly it. And if you're getting an IPS display, you're going to have a really good um, color reproduction and a really good contrast level. Okay. So this is important. So let's look at a few, like, you know, these two sketches and let's see why did I sketch this out. So I'm just taking a sip of water. Ah. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna put this as pose one and this as pose two. Now, most people that I have seen, including myself, for the longest time in my career, um, I have held my, I have placed my drawing tablet like this, which is at a 90 degree angle. Like, you know, it's, uh, I'll just write it this way. So it's at a 90 degree um, angle to my tablet. So it feels like, you know, this is my surface. And if I'm just going to draw the mark that I make comes in over there, you think like, you know, we might feel like, oh, what I'm doing is correct. But there is a big problem with that. Um, the issue is when you place your monitor this way, let me just hide this and let's hide that and let's bring this closer. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if I look over here, okay, I'm just gonna draw out a skeleton. So let's say this is my sternum and my rib cage comes down there this is my shoulder blades that are coming down here and so now this is the front view if i'm going to see it from the top view it's going to be in this pose it's going to be something like this my sternum is here my rib cage is over there and then my drawing like you know my hand goes down and my drawing tablet comes down here okay uh, and my hands are coming over my keyboard like so and my drawing tab okay so this isn't good because what's happening is that you're keeping your shoulders at a constant curved position okay so even though this might feel very natural to draw this is not good for your body okay um, you're keeping your shoulder blade, like, you know, your clavicle. Uh, is it called clavicle? Let me just check. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I just want it to be accurate. That's it. Yeah, the clavicle, the collarbone, right? So if you keep your collarbone this way, it's, it's going to cause a lot of issues. You are going to feel that, um, like, you know, it, you won't see that in the beginning, but it will, like, you know, come in over time. Is this muscle comes in, it kind of moves in, and it's always in constant strain. So your, your right side, like, you know, this area especially is going to have, like, a lot of pain, uh, which is not good. And you might probably go to physiotherapy, probably go to the doctor, try and like, you know, pay your bills just to get that fixed. So something that I noticed that fixed this is holding your tablet this way. Um, I will come back to that and say like why that is bad. Okay, so I'll probably hold my tablet this way. Uh, this was something that I learned from my colleague back from Yashraj Films. Clive. So Clive, if you're watching this, just know that I learned this from you and a lot more things. <laughs> He's a really good artist. I'm, I'm just going to ping his um, art station down in the video. Clive, I'm with. Okay, so they hold their tablets like this. And I was like, what the hell this is so uncomfortable? Because um, in my brain, what happens is that I'm picturing it's mapped like so right so every time i have to I have to like reset my brain and stuff this is probably what you might be thinking but let's say you placed your tablet at like a slight diagonal and a bit away from the screen uh your shoulder blades unlike here is going to be more straight okay it won't be that curved so your shoulder blades like you know your sh collarbone sorry is gonna be um, more straight okay it does not have that pressure coming into the chest so your sternum like you know the top three areas like you know the rib joints by connects to the sternum it's not going to be under constant pressure and the other thing is that you get a lot more movement going so if i'm taking this entire thing and if i'm going to move this I have a lot more movement. So I'm using my base muscles, my deltoids, my triceps, my biceps to make some nice big strokes. Okay, that's one. Second is even if I'm using my elbow, I can still move and the rest goes without saying, right? But if I'm taking this, okay, and if I'm trying to move, The movements are constricted because every time let me take that out okay so every time if I'm trying to move this it moves like so and it comes like so so there's a lot more the movements are very constrained when you place your tablet this way okay so of course I'll give you some exercises uh, where like you know placing it this way and how to calibrate your High hand and eye coordination to your screen uh, but just know this like you know this is not the optimal like you know I see many people hold it this way but it's not really optimal um, even if you go to a lot of um, professionals who use their drawing tablets like you know they kind of keep it to the side kind of like you know tilted not like this but something like that okay a good artist is Feng Zhu. Like, go look at uh, any of those videos where Feng Zhu is like kind of uh, drawing and talking about some Q and A kind of stuff. Like, he always keeps it to the side. Okay, and I usually wonder, like, why the hell um, does he keep it that way? But kind of um, like you know helps keep it kind of side. Like you know, plus your hands and stuff. They kind of move in a very circular kind of a pa fashion so let's say if i'm having my ha this is my shoulder this is where my clavicle comes in and if i'm just going to move like you know with my hands that are coming in it usually moves in an arc right so 
making an arc here will give you a nice arc over there that's that's the whole point okay um, don't think of it as now it's going to be bad like you know many people pro probably must be saying like oh keep it open you know you know no don't do that try this try this just give it a shot if you guys don't like it go back to the one that you're used to okay uh, all right so let's um, move on from here so this was just something that was very important and had to be spoken about okay so first is these two things now look at let's look at your tablet settings okay so I have um, a Cintiq a Cintiq 22 um, of course I do use an Intuos from time to time now <clears throat> in the Cintiq 22 I use a Pro Pen and a Grip Pen okay uh, another thing that you can probably do to reduce your strain on your hands is like kind of reduce the pressure sensitivity no. so that way you're not applying a lot of pressure to get those chunky opaque kind of tones so just reducing it a bit probably even go that much kind of like you know eases up your hands and stuff okay um of course the other softwares that i use is like you now mentioned that shown over there um this is literally what i use for you know, tablet settings uh now in digital painting, a few of the tools that you'll be using is brushes, uh, mixer brush, smudge tools, lasso, um, to name a few, and eraser. So, but the color picker, like you know, if you're a photo editor, the color picker, like you know, I have seen many photographers kind of press I and go to the color picking tool and pick that color then go back to brush or whatever that they want to change and stuff because this is a photo editing, editing software uh, Adam Duff made a huge deal out of this when he was reviewing Photoshop uh, for the iPad and he was very frustrated but this has been the legacy settings um, and the guys at Adobe just uh, added alt as a secondary option to kind of color pick okay that's mostly the reason why so I don't want to press alt all the time sometimes I just don't want to touch my keyboard so if I want to color pick I just set the back button of my tablet to alt both for the grip pen and the pro pen okay now <clears throat> if you're using let's say an older into us like I have an into us pro God knows when now the into us pro okay so let's say this is my pro and let's say this is um, this has like a different kind of an aspect ratio okay and my monitor has a different aspect ratio So let's say you're using an older tablet like you know where the aspect ratio is 3 by 2 okay and this is let's say 16 by 9 okay more of a widescreen sort of a thing so there is something on the Wacom settings where you can just go to calibrate like this is not but there is an option for the intervals where it shows calibrate you hit that and there is an option that comes in which says um, something along the lines of um, match proportions um, so I'm not entirely sure but uh, something called match proportions uh, or match working area so it just cuts off it just deactivates a certain portion of your tablet matching that so your strokes now this is only if you're using an older tablet okay uh, like from the bygone eras like you know not the latest ones um, so this way you'll get like more control over your um, screen like you know hand-eye coordination okay so that's that's the last thing about tablet settings okay so now let's go to the next thing which is moving 
your hands okay so <clears throat> there are three types of movements that comes in again i'm just going to draw my there are three types of um, movements that comes in when you're drawing one is the big movements okay. the second is the medium and the other one is a small okay so you can distribute this even in design terms like you know big medium small shapes or uh, the big shapes the medium lights or and like those small can be details and stuff like that uh, now the same thing applies to your hands um, regardless if you're a left-handed or right-handed okay um, this is going to be a bit of a longer video so if you guys uh, don't feel like watching it just just give a dislike and just leave it doesn't matter I'm not doing this for money or whatever as I said before okay so Whoever's gonna stay around, good for you. Your big movement should come from your shoulders. So your pecs, your deltoids, you know, the big chunk of muscles. So get your big strokes from here. Now this will naturally happen when you sit in this kind of a pose. It will naturally happen. You don't have to worry about this. When you apply this pose with this way of holding your pen what I'm going to show you right now is going to naturally happen okay um, so that's your big muscle okay so your big strokes you just like you know since there is no surface contact you're not holding down your entire palm on your tablet it's just your little finger your pen your hands will glide much easier on the tablet Okay, so your big strokes will be powerful. They will be energetic. Okay, now let's go down to your smaller strokes. So basically, your till your elbow. So this is your medium. It usually comes from your elbows, like you know, from this area. Um, again, usually you like you know. It will be kind of working and it will just make sense on like you know why um, I wish I had a camera I could probably just show it uh, but it's fine um, <clears throat> so if you are trying to go for a medium stroke just make sure that your movement is coming from your elbow okay so kind of from here on. so that way it's just this that's more and finally your smaller strokes are coming from your wrists so whenever you're making details or writing down something so let's like let's say what I'm writing down is what I'm writing right um, this I just wrote it using my wrist I did not use my elbows okay so the same thing kind of applies like you know, when you're kind of doing small little detail work separate out the way you move your hands again this is something that's not kind of discussed when i see a lot of digital painting tutorials on youtube so i just thought i'd bring this up here in this first intro <clears throat> okay so another thing that i forgot to kind of mention is when you're using this way to hold your pen is that let's say you have those fancy art pen by Vcom okay where you're kind of um, rotating your pen to change the angle of your like you know like this like you know when you rotate it kind of changes your the way the brush kind of functions um, this is much easier when you hold your pen this way is because you have a lot more control over your, your thumb okay so you can just move since you're not putting a lot of pressure holding your pen this way you can just move your hands around okay so just keep that in mind like you know these are small tips 
that people don't talk about. I learned it the hard way and I just want to give it for free. Okay. Um, more free stuff coming in. <laughs> All right, so that's one. Now let's look at software interface. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, I have a lot of um, softwares that I use, like to name a few, I use Corel Painter sometimes, I use Krita more extensively, I use Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, Procreate Heavy Paint, and like you know, Procreate Heavy Paint and Infinite Painter when I'm on the go. But mostly is Photoshop and Krita and TV Paint at times, like you know, for animation work. Um, let's say. <clears throat> You want to see how the interfaces look for different softwares. They are pretty much the same. So I'm bringing up Clip Studio Paint. So this is my basic Clip Studio Paint. If I press B, I got my brush tool, color picking to I can get that colors. Um, Clip Studio Paint, I stopped using it. Um, so I'm not going to talk much about it. But if you see, the interface is pretty simple. I press tab I go to full mo screen mode okay the same thing um, if I'm going to Krita which I use a lot nowadays if I press tab I go to full screen and even here I take out tools that I don't need so I need these two I need that I don't need this so I just close that and I probably use this but I use it as a docker okay, it's, it's not not coming in okay but I just leave it be so I take out anything that's not needed okay so when I want to see my brushes I just press right click on my tab on my pen and I got that sometimes I don't even use this because uh, I have my color wheel so that's the best thing about Krita and it's free it's open source um, I can customize it anyway okay uh, one of the reasons why I call this thing Round Brush Studio is because um, Round Brushes is there in every software and have improved my painting skills over the years that uh, I can just paint with any software now. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, I'm doing the entire short film in Krita. Okay. Um, now the difference between this and other softwares is that some softwares have brush mixing inbuilt so let's say i have this and if i'm pressing it lightly or holding it lightly um, you probably would notice that it kind of blends in those colors now this is not there in photoshop photoshop there are other tools but this is not a krita video so i'm just going to close this and let's talk about photoshop so in Photoshop, the same thing applies. Remove everything that you think is not required. So when you boot up Photoshop for the first time, you probably will see something similar to this, uh, except this is a older version of Photoshop, 2000, like, you know, it's 2013, I guess, CS6. Uh, got it then, using it since then. Now, <clears throat> a few things that I do is, I don't need swatches, so I take out swatches. I don't need history. I take out history, I take out properties, okay, I don't need adjustment layers because adjustment layers already comes down here, so why do I need that, okay, um, take that out, uh, styles, doesn't matter because I can um, make a mark and I can go in and I got all my layer styles, so doesn't need, and I'll explain how to use this as well as we go on. Uh, and the later videos. The first video is just a bit longer because I'm explaining a lot more essential stuff. Okay. Um, and there is something called the bridge. I don't know if anyone uses the bridge. I use the timeline sometimes, so I keep it, but mostly it's just close. Okay. Keep it as simple. I go so much that I keep everything floating and consolidated so small. Um, I even pull up this guy and I keep it like so so everything is tiny sometimes I even do this okay so um, everything is small it's all floating and I can just navigate whatever that I want however that I want okay 
Um, let's say you set up your interface, keep it simple. Like, you know, one of the motors in life is keep things simple, don't complicate your life. Same thing applies here. Um, now, if you want to save this, all you can do is just go down and just say new workspace and hit whatever. So let's say test mini. Okay, done. So you can export this thing out as well. It's a whole thing. But this is how my workspace usually looks like. Very similar to what I just did, right? Test mini. And that's mini. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. That's basically your interface. Um, one additional thing is that I would probably say right now itself is you probably must have this HSB sliders. I would suggest you guys to change it to RGB sliders. I'll make a video on that, like, you know, probably show how to use this when we talk about. Um, colors colors cooking and light and shadows and so on. okay um okay so moving on now let's say i want to talk about your basic tools so the basic tools that you'll be using is a brush okay you'll be using the mixer brush okay uh you'll be using the eraser um, the lasso, okay, the mark selection tool, okay, and a lot of controls. You, you probably must be seeing me do that, like, okay, okay, uh, controls. You. Now, <clears throat> this is all you need just to start off with your digital painting stuff. Um, you don't need something fancy and so. Uh, even the way I'm going to show you how to use certain brushes, you would not need your brush settings so much, like, you know, this little panel. So you can just collapse it. Um, and I'll show you how to use brushes and so on and so forth as well. But I just hope you guys liked this small little intro video on uh, Digital Painting 101. So this is just for your poses, like, you know, how you stand, how you sit and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so leave a like if you liked it or leave a dislike if you did not like it, uh, but please, please give me your feedback, uh, feedback is important, um, tell me how to improve the video, okay, the videos that I'm making for you guys, what would you like to see, um, maybe suggestions on what future videos could be like after this is done, um, the entire series will be uploaded this week itself and uh, hope you guys enjoy. See ya.